non-standard work is really anything that's not what we think of as the standard work arrangement of having a regular employer, regular schedule, set pay level benefits. I think gig work really is an example of non-standard work. Lorraine Conroy is a professor of environmental and occupational health sciences at the University of Illinois, Chicago, and director of the UIC Center for Healthy Work, a NIOSH-funded center of excellence in total worker health. There are traditional hazards that we think of. Many of these jobs expose them to physical risks, you know, injury risks. So if you think about an Uber driver, they're in a car all day. They have limited opportunities to take breaks because they don't get paid unless they are actually have somebody in their car with them. They have to deal with the public. They are at risk of violence. And the difference, though, is that you're now the employer, so you're not eligible for workers' compensation if you get injured. If you file a claim for a, an injury, it comes against your car insurance, but it's not like it's part of a larger pooled insurance that a large employer might have. And if your job is contingent and you're the only one in your household working, you're not going to complain. And yeah. so, you know, so there's lots of things that are really great about the way we've set up regulations, but they're all built on the assumption of a standard employer-employee relationship. And that's becoming less common over the last, you know, several decades. And so we haven't adapted our enforcement of the law. I think um, flexibility is the primary benefit that people cite in choosing that kind of work. Non-standard work can be flexible for some or unstable for others. For higher wage non-standard jobs, like consultants, non-standard work arrangements provide more control and flexibility when it comes to their work schedule. Others may use flexible or gig jobs as temporary solutions to supplement wages and pay for large expenses like vacations or new cars. For workers whose only job is a low-paying, non-standard job, it can be very unstable. Things like vacations or new cars are out of the question, and basic necessities like childcare, food, and rent are never guaranteed. They have no control over their work schedule because they often make barely enough income to cover basic expenses. This leads to more work during hours they could be resting or spending time with family. For these workers, it's not a flexible schedule. It is the anxiety of not knowing if their next paycheck will come. The workers accept much more risk in exchange for flexibility. And that is the perceived benefit of their non-standard job. In these arrangements, the overwhelming number of benefits favor the employer who accepts far less risk in the arrangement. David Wheel describes this fissured workplace, right, where you essentially outsource as much as you can around your core functions um, to provide more flexibility, which is one of the reasons, right? If you have temporary workers, you, you can just say today, don't come to work tomorrow, we don't have enough work. And, you know, if you have a regular employee, you really can't do that. There's usually some, you know, notice rights or, um, you know, guaranteed expectation for hours and things like that. Again, this isn't entirely new. Like restaurant workers and retail workers, this has always been the case, right? It's becoming more standard outside of those kinds of jobs, right? Somebody might have been a waitress in college and put up with that uncertainty of when they're working or how much money. But now those are permanent kinds of careers or, you know, long-term jobs. And what we've seen is a growth in non-standard work across the economy. In 2018, Deloitte did an employer survey and found that 50% of respondents employed a significant number of contractors. They also had, you know, high levels, almost 25% of freelancers and about 13% reported that they had a significant number of gig or app-based workers. And so um, I think we are seeing both a decrease in the benefits associated with those kinds of jobs and an increase in the risks that the worker, beyond the health and safety, the risks that workers have. There's less um, employer responsibility for health and safety. 
I want to have long-term relationships with my temporary agencies or with my um, contractors, right? If I want to outsource something to another company, say employee health or HR, you know, I want good service still. And so, you know, and I want them to want to work for me. And, you know, so I think you could build in some protections into those contractual relationships as well. The employers in these increasingly common relationships have no legal responsibility to the health and safety of these workers. And the physical and mental hazards associated with this work often takes a toll on the communities affected, many of which are communities of color. Since work and where you live are highly correlated, then we see the impact of this kind of work, the negative impacts of this kind of work at a community level. When you have large numbers of people in a whole community that have this kind of work, then the whole community has less resources, less opportunities, you know? So there is a social gradient in health. We have better access to health care. You have more opportunities probably for eating well, living in decent housing, being in a neighborhood that's safe, having opportunities to exercise, having lower risks at work, you know, higher status jobs have lower workplace risks associated with them. This has a community impact when they hire temporary workers instead of hiring people from the community. If people had better paying jobs and more stable jobs, the neighborhood is nicer and then oh, having a business in that neighborhood is also nicer, you know. So I think there are, you know, that kind of t connecting the dots that these low income, high um, pollution, high violence neighborhoods, there is a role for work in those, in, in fixing those neighborhoods and that, you know, better employment and more decent work for worker people that live in those communities would change the nature of those communities. You know, our system is set up that the employer is responsible, but when you have these non-standard work arrangements, who the employer is gets very ambiguous. And so yeah. then who's responsible for health and safety is also equally ambiguous and often workers get left out. Check the links in the description for more information about non-standard work and what's being done about it.